Hi y'all, welcome back to the workshop. Walter here. So glad you could be with me today. Real quick one today. The last time I spoke about rabbit planes, we lightly touched on molding planes. And one of the one of the topics was more modern parallel blades versus the tapered blades of the older tools. And that adjusting them is totally different. Absolutely, 100%, totally different than bench planes. My bench plane gets whacked on the heel to bring the blade back up. And uh, tapped on the wedge and, and on the metal. Okay. On the old planes, let's say you go to a flea market or a antique store and you buy yourself a molding plane. You always want to check, make sure there's very few cracks in the end grain itself. You want to make sure that the plane body itself is not warped, cupped, twisted, bowed, whatever. But you get it home and the iron is stuck. If it's a tapered iron, just take your hammer, and yes, it can be steel. If I had a brass one like this, it would be great, but I don't. Lightly tap that. Okay, it'll come loose. Lightly tap it, and what happens is the wedge comes loose. Now, at first it may take some encouraging, but after cleaning and use, it'll be fine. And that's how you remove the iron. Then you inspect the bed area so that there's no damage to this bedded corner, because that is where the iron registers against. I'm pushing down on the iron into the back and I'm watching so that it's just before the bottom of the plane. If your iron is severely pitted, you may need to make a new one. You can flatten them out and try to get rid of the pit, but sometimes it's really, really tough. This one wasn't so bad. These are called flags for the obvious reason. So you put your tapered iron back in the plane. You put your finger here so that you can feel where it's just barely touching you. you. Put the wedge in. And you just give it a push with your hand. It's not protruding down here. Lightly tap the wedge. Okay, now there is no iron exposed. So I tap it a few times. And I'm really lightly tapping it until I feel the iron starting to protrude. Set it. Test it. No cut. A little more iron. Set the wedge. And there's the cut. You want a heavier cut? You tap it more. And you can take really, really pretty heavy cuts. I'm just doing this freehand here, it's not art, but you can take pretty heavy, pretty heavy cuts. And then to get your finishing cuts, you can take the plane face down on your bench, give it a tap, and that can pull the blade back. Sometimes it works better than others. Not quite there yet. But you do not hit, all right, there we go. You do not hit the heel or the toe of a tapered wedge molding plane with a hammer. So at the end, at the end of uh, making a molding, you sometimes want a really fine cut. There we go. A finer cut just to smooth out the plane. So that's totally different than a more modern plane which has a parallel iron. If it has a parallel iron, 
you can't release it by tapping on it. I mean, you can, you can get it to move by tapping just on the iron and if, it's, if it's stuck. But most modern planes will have a strike button back here. You whack it there, it causes the iron to back up, the wedge loosens and away you go. Tighten the wedge. So that's about it. I hope that helps you. Molding planes do not get struck on the heel or the toe. They are tapped loose by tapping on the iron and then lightly pulling the wedge out. I hope that saves destroying a very nice plane because I've seen some that have been totally whacked and, and gouged up. So I hope this helps somebody. And uh, if you liked what you saw here today, give it a thumbs up. Hope you're subscribed to the channel for more videos that are coming. And uh, you go have yourself a great day. Go out in your shop. Make some shavings. Walter out.